Hello, 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 my fellow Vermonters. I'm Chris Erickson, and I'm here today to encourage you to join a tax revolution. It's time for a tax revolt. Now, there's two parts. One part is voting out all of the Vermont state legislators who have voted to raise your taxes in the past year. Bye-bye, get rid of them, vote them out. Now, part two is your federal taxes. Look at your paycheck. There are federal taxes taken out. Now, your taxes go to the IRS, and then the United States Congress votes to give your hard-earned tax dollars out all over the place. And one of the things they do with them is give them out to to corporations as subsidies. This is also called corporate welfare. And we have to ban corporate welfare. Now, banning corporate welfare means that we have to stop the United States Congress, House and Senate from voting to give your hard earned federal tax dollars to corporations as subsidies. This must stop, we must ban this. We have to have a tax revolution. Now, Bernie Sanders, looking at my internet here, Bernie Sanders has started a bill and that is, he calls it legislation to end corporate welfare for the fossil fuel industry and save American taxpayers billions of dollars. Now, Bernie Sanders says American taxpayers are putting $17 billion annually to subsidize the fossil fuel industry. Now, Bernie Sanders is looking at it one way and he has two objectives. I only have one objective, and that is to ban the subsidies. Bernie Sanders wants to ban the subsidies to the fossil fuel industry and then spend the same amount of money on electric vehicles and all kinds of solar pa panels and windmills. So Bernie Sanders is pulling a bait and switch you're going to lose just as many federal tax dollars if you vote for Bernie Sanders. You could vote for me, you could give me a right in vote for United States Senator. My name is Chris Erickson. All I want to do is save you money, which is wrongfully being voted on by the United States Congress and sent out to corporations as subsidies. But Another difference between Bernie Sanders and me is I want to ban all corporate subsidies. I want to ban all corporate welfare. You make your paycheck and you look at your paycheck and you see the federal tax dollars taken out and whoosh, they go. And where do they end up? They end up in all different kinds of corporations as subsidies. And the CEOs, the, the, the leaders of these companies, the presidents of these companies, they're making millions and millions of dollars a year in their paychecks. They don't need your federal tax dollars. The corporations make billions of dollars. They don't need your federal tax dollars. All you're doing is padding the CEO, you're making the rich richer and yourself, the low income, hardworking people poorer. There's no reason to make low income, hardworking people poorer by forcing you to give your tax dollars by force, by I mean by a vote of the United States Congress and give them to corporations as subsidies where the corporations pay their top people, their CEOs, mega million dollar salaries. That makes no sense at all. It's like kings and queens. It's like we're being used to serfs. 
we're being used like indentured servants, practically like slaves, practically like slaves, because if you don't pay your federal taxes, they can put you in prison. So it is a threat. It's a terrible threat. And we're making the rich richer and the hardworking people poorer, and it's wrong. So Bernie Sanders has this bill, but he has two motives. He wants to put the fossil fuel industry out of business. And Bernie's bill, let's see, Bernie's bill is S4406. You can look that up on the internet. And I'm looking at it right now, S4406. And Bernie's bill is called End Polluter Welfare Act of 2024. That's really something. End Polluter Act of End Polluter Welfare Act of 2024. S4406 in the United States Senate. And Bernie's got himself some co-sponsors for this. He's got six co-sponsors and Peter Welch of Vermont. So let's see, that's Jeff Merkley, Senator Cory Booker, Chris Van Hollen, Peter Welch, Elizabeth Warren, Edward Markey are the co-sponsors. Now this bill, the date is May 23rd, 2024. So they entered the bill and then they did nothing. Now, this is what I call Bernie bluffing. Bernie says he's going to do things, and then he never does them. He just never finishes anything he starts. What has Bernie ever finished? Bernie is a bluffer. So if you vote for Bernie Sanders, you're voting for two things. You're voting to end the fossil fuel industry, Say goodbye to oil, say goodbye to gas for your car, say goodbye to home heating fuel, because in this bill, the 69 page bill is a segment where they're talking about not allowing these fossil fuels on trains. Oops. So, so this this bill just goes on and on and on and on for 69 pages and it's got all kinds of sections and what they want is they don't want fossil fuels on trains so how are they going to get to vermont a lot of it comes on trains so bernie sanders bill has two objectives he wants to stop corporate subsidies because they make the rich richer off the back of the hardworking people. And so I agree we must end corporate subsidies, but I do not agree with ending the fossil fuel industry. I like putting gas in my car. I drive a 1999 Chevy. It's 25 years old. I can't afford a new car. I just keep repairing it. And because it's 25 years old, there's all, all kinds of junkyards full of parts. The mechanic can also always find a, a part for it. I just keep fixing it. I don't want to stop gas for cars. My 1999 Chevy always passes inspection and it runs great. And when it doesn't, I just get it fixed again. Keep driving it. Okay, so... My home heating fuel. I love having home heating fuel. I don't want to switch to some weird electrical gimmicks. And I'm going to talk more about that. All these electric things, these electric vehicles and solar panels and windmills, they all come at a cost that we don't immediately see. They come from slave labor in China and from children working in mines in Africa. Now, th this kind of really hit me recently because I had one of those ancestry DNA tests and a bunch of my relatives did and we all compared them and looked at each other's and I'm 51% the same as one brother and 55% the same as another brother and 26% the same as this cousin and that cousin. And 
What was fascinating was I expected to have the American Indian DNA. That's in the family history. It was there. I guess maybe there might be some African. My mother always said my father's black, curly, fuzzy hair. She always said, I think he's part black. And his aunts were kicked off the beach in the 1950s at the Chesapeake Bay because they were too dark. Okay, so I suspe suspected that. So I got a little bit of the, the um, Native American Indian DNA. And then I got four times as much as African as the Native American Indian. And then I got, not too big of a surprise, Asian Chinese Han. And I thought, I always thought my great grandmother's eyes were kind of slanty. And I always thought great aunt Annie's eyes were kind of slanty. So that was no big surprise. And then I got 72% Northern European. I look mighty white. And out of that, 40% was Swedish. No surprise. My great grandfather and my great great grandfather sailed over from Sweden. But what was interesting to me was that 10% or less of Swedish people have Viking warrior DNA. Now, hundreds of years ago, these were the most fierce people on the planet. They sailed around, they raped, they pillaged, they, you know, ravaged other ships and stole everything. They, they were pirates. So 40% of my DNA chart is pirate. And I thought, oh, that's perfect. You really need to vote for me. I'll go on down to Washington, D.C., and raid the national treasury and bring the money back to Vermont. Bernie Sanders has talked about the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer for years, but he's like a Vermont teddy bear. He's actually like a poodle who missed his, you know, his thing of getting, you know, how they have the poodle haircut, the funny little poodle haircuts. He missed his grooming session in New York came over to Vermont, let his hair grow wild, and became a Vermont teddy bear, but he doesn't have the personality to get things done. Bernie Sanders is all talk. He's all bluffing. He talks about getting marijuana legal under federal law. He never gets it done. He talks about the rich getter getting richer and the poor getting poorer. He writes up these nice bills like this new one in May of 2024, that's just to stop the subsidies for the fossil fuel industry. That's, you know, fuel and oil and all that. But he'll never get it done. Bernie doesn't get things done. He's just a teddy bear. Me, I've got DNA to prove I'm 40% pirate. Send me down to Washington, D.C. I'll get the job done. All right. So we're going to talk about this more because... Bernie Sanders' objective is two things. Stop corporate subsidies for the fossil fuel industry, that's oil and fuel. I agree they don't deserve the subsidies because the money comes out of your paycheck. Look at your paycheck. Look at the federal taxes taken out. Those federal taxes are taken out and they go to the IRS and then the US Congress votes to give them to the oil corporations. The oil corporations give their top people millions and millions of dollars in salaries and all kinds of benefits. They don't deserve it. That makes us slaves. That makes us indentured servants. It's wrong. All right, so I'll get back with you in a minute here. And then we're going to talk about why I disagree with Bernie, because I do not agree that we should be switching to windmills solar power and electric vehicles because of the slave slave labor in China, which is fascinating to me now that I find out I'm part Chinese Han, and the slave labor of children in Africa. I got a right to say something. I got a DNA test that says I'm part African. All right, be back with you in a minute here. Hello, hello. I'm Chris Erickson. I just had to take Daisy out. 
for a minute real quick and try to adjust the lighting because the lighting was kind of dark. All right, so then I took a break and I watched some YouTube videos, a whole bunch of YouTube videos about what is fraudulently being called green energy. Now, green energy, by green energy, people mean solar panels, electric vehicles, um, all kinds of things that really aren't green. So I started with the, the, the assertion that there are a lot of stories on the internet about Chinese slave labor being used to create the so-called green energy. And the Chinese slave labor is because of forced labor of people um, and the spelling of their name is U-Y-D-H-U-R and it's pronounced on some videos as Uyghur. There are variations in the pronunciation. So they're, they're talking about these people and, and because they're from one area of China and they have different facial features than the Han Chinese who are the majority of the population. The majority population Han Chinese are forcing the Uyghur people to do essentially slave labor. And if the Uyghur people complain, they either kill them or throw in, them in prison. So they can't complain. So it's up to the Han Chinese people to have higher moral and ethical standards and to raise the conversation about stopping slave labor. In the United States of America, it was white people who had to raise the conversation of stopping other white people from using slave labor. Now, the same thing needs to happen now in China. The Han Chinese people have to raise their moral and ethical standards and stop forcing the Uyghur people to be used as slave labor, forced labor. Okay, so now studying the, the um, so-called green energy, I'll go, I'm just gonna read off some of my notes because I watched endless videos for hours. I'm just gonna read off a few of my notes. Now, aluminum is made by forced labor. Aluminum is used in cars, the cars that are sold to the United States from China. Aluminum is made by forced labor in China and then moved from one part of China to another part of China and reprocessed so they can cover up the fact that slave labor was used to make the aluminum. And in some videos I saw, there were people from Kentucky complaining that this is unfair to the aluminum manufacturers in Kentucky because they can't compete with the prices. They can't compete with the price of aluminum made from slave labor in China, even if the Chinese are covering it up by moving the aluminum from one location to another, reprocessing it some and saying, oh, see, it's not made from slave labor. So the, the aluminum manufacturers in Kentucky are complaining about unfair competition. Now, like I said, the aluminum's used in... Okay, I touched the wrong button there. All right, so aluminum is used in cars which are sold in the United States. And this is wrong, it's unfair competition and it's morally and ethically unconscionable. Now, cobalt is another one I looked up. Cobalt is mined in the Congo. It, cobalt is in every lithium ion battery and lithium ion batteries are used in smartphones, tablets, every laptop and every electric vehicle. Every electric vehicle you drive has lithium ion in, in the battery. Now these are mined in the Congo. What is interesting is in, that I find in these YouTube videos is that the majority of the mines in the Congo are owned by the Chinese. And the majority of the workers are underage minor 
teenagers and they're working in sandals and they're exposed to the cobalt and the cobalt is toxic and they're breathing in the cobalt dust. So three fourths of the cobalt used in manufacturing in the world comes from the Congo. Now, like I said, cobalt is toxic to breathe. The workers and the kids are breathing it in all day and they're working for around a dollar a day. They're working for the Chinese in the Congo in Africa. This is all morally and ethically wrong and it is, it is unconscionable. Now, some of the videos claim the, the journalist will, will go out with a video camera and he'll say, well, the sellers, the, the manufacturers um, who are selling these products to the United States and then the sellers in the United States are claiming, oh no, it's not made with slave labor because they'll have one mine where, where they'll say they, they can send the journalists to and there may not be slave labor in that one mine. But if you go to all the mines, the majority of them are slave labor. So they're, they're doing different things to cover this up. Now, then there's the problem with the coal is used to manufacture solar panels. So solar panels are not green because it takes coal to manufacture the solar panels. Now, um, Chris Smith is a representative in the US Congress and he entered a bill in the House Ways and Means Committee because he wants to outlaw the sales of products made from any forced slave labor in any foreign country, whether it's China or Africa. He wants to stop those products from being sold in the United States. So he entered a bill, but it hasn't passed yet. Um, and then I saw another YouTube video with the hearing with Josh Hawley, who is the Republican United States Senator for the state of Missouri. He's up for re-election. And he was questioning someone, a CEO of one of these big corporations, and the CEO answered everything with, well, I don't really know about that. I don't really know about that. You know, and Josh Hawley's attitude is, how'd you get to be CEO? You don't know anything. It's all a cover up. So right now what's going on is green energy is not green. People are being hurt. They're being used to slave labor. Um, coal is being used to manufacture solar panels. The, the cobalt, which is in every lithium ion battery and every smartphone, every tablet, every, every laptop and every electric vehicle is toxic. And the underage minor teenagers working in the mines in the Congo, the mines which are primarily owned by the Chinese are being exposed to the cobalt it's toxic, it, it's a horrible, horrible situation. And we've got to stop, we've, we just have to stop and start being honest. And so what I object to in Bernie Sanders bill that he introduced in May of 2024 this year is that he wants to stop the oil and gas industry from receiving subsidies, which are our hard earned tax dollars. We should not be forced to pay our hard-earned tax dollars and turn them over to oil and gas corporations so their CEOs can be paid millions of dollars in benefits every year, salary and benefits. That's wrong. That's another type of slave labor. So I agree that we must stop the subsidies to corporations, but I do not agree that we should switch to this so-called green energy which is not really green, that's a fraudulent term. It's a fraudulent term in com commerce. So I'll be back in a minute. Hello, I'm Chris Erickson. I'm a write-in candidate for United States Senator. And I've been talking to you about Bernie Sanders' new bill filed in May of 2024. And it's called S4406. And uh, the official name 
is End Polluter Welfare Act of 2024. Now, I do have some objections to it. I agree with some of it. I disagree with the intent of a lot of it. So because I'm a write-in candidate, and if you want to, you can write in my name, Chris Erickson for United States Senator. I'll explain the difference between what Bernie intends and what I object to and what I agree to. Now, Bernie Sanders wants to ban fossil fuel subsidies for corporations. I agree with that. We work hard as Americans. We work hard. We pay taxes. Our taxes go to the IRS. And then the United States Congress votes to give our tax dollars out all over the place. What I object to is any corporate subsidies. Corporate subsidies go all over the place. They even go to corporate farms, these huge, gigantic farms that cage chickens in um, horribly constricted, cramped in environments. And they do that to pigs and cows and all kinds of things. These corporate farms are cruel and horrible. They shouldn't be receiving federal subsidies to torture animals. That's wrong. Let's go back to small family farms. Corporate subsidies go to aerospace corporations like Boeing. The problem with giving corporate subsidies to aerospace corporations is they sell their products around the world to our allies. They make billions in profits and they don't give us a share. They made their, their money from corporate subsidies and they used our corporate subsidies to sell products internationally and make profits and they didn't give us a share. Now, rich people don't do that. Rich people buy shares of stock in a corporation and they get stock dividends. They get a share of the profits, but they think we're all stupid and we are stupid. We're not stupid. We're not stupid. We're just uneducated as to what's going on. So what I'm trying to say is let's get smartened up. Let's get educated to what's going on. We pay our federal taxes. Look at your paycheck. Taxes come out of your paycheck. Some go to the federal government, to the IRS. The U.S. Congress votes to hand out our hard-earned tax dollars. When they give subsidies to corporations like Boeing, they make billions in profits. And they don't give us a share of the profits. Even though they took our money, they don't give us a share of the profits. That's an uneducated thing for us to allow. We are uneducated for so long as we allow that because rich, smart people invest in shares of stock and get dividends. They get a share of the profits. The uneducated masses of people are not getting a share of the profits. And that's a subtle slavery. It's a subtle form of slavery. Now, Bernie Sanders intends to stop that subtle form form of slavery when it comes to fossil fuels, oil, and gas. And that's what S4406 is about, his End Polluter Welfare Act. What I don't agree with on his bill is, for example, on page 12, section 115, it says any amounts made available to the Department of Transportation including the Federal Railroad Administration, may not be used to provide financial assistance to any project that transports fossil fuels. And that means fossil fuels like fuel oil to Vermont homes. Many Vermonters heat their homes in the winter with fossil fuels. They get fossil fuel assistance. This will put an end to that because the majority of fossil fuels come to Vermont by train. So this is the dirtiest deed in this whole bill. Again, it's Bernie Sanders S4406, the End Polluter Welfare Act of 2024, page 12, section 115 says, any amounts made available to the Department of Transportation, including the Federal Railroad Administration may not be used to provide financial assistance for any project 
that transports fossil fuels. So that means Vermonters who rely on fuel assistance and Vermonters who heat their homes with fuel oil number two, the prices are going to go sky high. People are gonna freeze. People are absolutely going to freeze. Now, Bernie Sanders has done this. He's entered this bill. Uh, thank goodness, no action other than entering the bill in May of 2024 this spring. No further action has been taken. He's got six co-sponsors and Bernie Sanders would rather we freeze to death than have fuel oil come to Vermont by train, which is how it gets here. So. The bottom line is, I want you to give me a write-in vote for U.S. Senator. My name is Chris Erickson because the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. And the way this is happening makes us look stupid. But we're not stupid. We're just uneducated to the fact that out of our paychecks, federal taxes are taken. They go to the IRS and the U.S. Congress votes to give them out. And way too much, something like $92 billion a year is given out to corporations as subsidies. And the CEOs of these corporations get mega million dollar salaries and benefits. Why should the average Vermonter be making around $50,000 a year when the, and then have to pay for these corporate CEOs to make mega million dollar salaries? The corporate CEOs see 330 million people in America and they want a dollar from this one and a dollar from this one and a dollar from this one and a dollar from that one. So they pay political action committees and lobbyists to go visit the U.S. senators and, and talk them into giving them subsidies. It's all a con job. It's a horrible con job. And we have to put a stop to it. And one way to do that is to vote for me, Chris Erickson, for United States Senator, give me a write-in vote. Just write in my name, Chris Erickson. And that's all I have to say for now. See you more later. Bye-bye.